static. Linked up with a couple exes just to make sure I'm protected. Cause losing me is like wearing heavy chains as your necklace. And I'm infinitely better. It's hard for them to accept it than any nigga they had or any nigga that's next. And come on, they fuck around and do some crazy shit. Like trying to lock me down forever on some baby shit. So I just tell them I'll be back on some lazy shit. They start asking questions, juking on some shady shit. Come on, this the problem with being the same. Trying to settle down early, won't have me in no chain. Sitting court side, but I'm trying to be in the game. There's something deep inside of me that's just not easily tamed. Come on, and I be trying to calm it down. But something by my spirit is attracted to the crown. Don't want no wedding ring, so I be dumbfound to CC every girl that I'd CC round town. But if I did, I'd tell them that I love them. Don't want no situation, I just really want to fuck them. And after I come through, I hit it crazy, then I tuck them. I just might leave a hoodie or a shirt, cause that's my custom. I'm telling you. Pro at this shit. My stroke back and forth like we be rowing this shit. I feel ahead with lies, but she be knowing this shit. So when it's time for our goodbyes, she start holding. I'm privileged drinkers, baby. Yo, what's going on? You got your host. Uh, I don't know. People call me all kinds of different stuff. You know what I mean? They call me Unk. They call me Reese. They call me Babe. My wife calls me Babe. Got my son calling me that too, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean. We 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 back with one of these episodes that we wanted to talk about. We've been trying to get this together for a very very long time. Um, you know, if anybody's been listening to our Unprivileged Drinkers podcast, you know that uh, myself and my wife had a new baby. Um, she had some complications with the incision, so it was a lot of stuff going on. But we finally back, and uh, we want to come talk to the people, man. We got a real uh, I think interesting topic that a lot of people overlook. Or when they do mention it, they just talk about it in a way that is very vague. It's not um, in depth in mm-hmm. the way in which we want to discuss it um, today. So, um, without further ado, I'm gonna bring my wife in. You know, let her introduce herself. Talk to the people, babe. Hey, I'm Neek. Unique, but mostly everybody called me Neek. My husband calls me Babe, but you know, that's it. I don't got no other fancy names. I think I. I don't know. Do I just call you that because you, uh, you start calling me that? All right, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know. Communication is a motherfucker, isn't it? It is. I, I don't know how we got there. I think it's we've been doing it for so long. I don't right, know who right. started it first. Right, right. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> you know? I'm just thinking about it. Like, who started this mess? But, um, you know, before we uh we do anything, we like to do a little uh. Uh, I guess, well, we th- we call it shot o'clock, but sip, uh, right now it's kind of like our brunch time, so we're going to take right. a little sip. We got um, our favorite Simply. Shout out to Simply. I love Simply. Yes. Uh, this is Simply Orange with a uh, pineapple, but with a little kick to it. You know a little what I mean? kick to it. We got some right. Sip Shine to top it off with, and um, I got the Arnold Shiner in mine. And I got the Raspberry Shine Aid. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, this is a. You can go to CW Spirits, pick you up some. Um, it's it's a pretty pretty good product. Um, I love it. Shout out really to Kyle good. over there at uh, Sip Shine. This is amazing. So uh, you're supposed to clink with your man for that. Jesus, I needed a little sip. Oh yeah, that's dynamite. Yeah, this is really good. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So uh, what's the, what's the name for it, babe? Yeah, we're going to call this one a mimosa. Mimosa. I mean, we get it. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you, if you want, um, go to uh, cwspirits.com. Um, anything over $125 is uh, free shipping. Um, use the code UMP5 at checkout. You can uh, save a uh, percentage on anything you want. We also have something that we're going to try a little bit later. It's uh, like boba, uh, like little things here, leche. This Cocktail. One Cocktail caviar. caviar, yep. And um, this particular one is raspberry. We're going to try this a little later, but yeah, you can also pick this up at CW Spirits uh, whenever you get a chance to uh, go shoot over there. But as we were saying before, um, this conversation is going to be about communication and, and not just communication in a way where people just talk, but the multifaceted ways that you can communicate with all the forms of communication that we do have and it being effective. 
we've gotten to a place in society where I think that a lot of people have go come com- become comfortable, excuse me, with the idea of dysfunctional communication where mm-hmm. that whole, like the saying, I said what I said, even though that person may not agree with what you said, you kind of like shutting it off after what you say is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I don't subscribe to that. We don't subscribe to that. You know what I mean? We, I think at a point in our relationship, I think I played bully ball was like, I said what I said and that's it. And there was no, it was no coming back from that where now we are at a place where we can communicate even through, um, disagreements as well as um, let down, stuff like that. You know, things that aren't comfortable. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the part that is important for this generation, our generation, even ones before because there's a lot of stubborn people. I know I have family members who didn't speak for years just due to whatever, lack of um, understanding of things. So that 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 is something that um, is important to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and I know that some of, I, I wasn't always the best communicator in a lot of ways, um, no matter what the uh, relationship was. So, again, this is a topic that we wanted to bring to the forefront. Um, and, you, and you're a great communicator. I think you always have been. Um, I think at a time where we didn't have social media, you were one to write letters. So <laughs> I think I think that, you know, people can utilize maybe some of what you have to say in regards to communication. Um how would you want to like I guess, kind of start and tackle what you think effective communication looks like without being toxic or negative? Um, so I do want to go back to when you said people like to talk about communication, but they basically generalize it. It was really vague. Um, so what's been on my mind lately is a lot of what, I know all of us have been seeing on social on social media mm-hmm. when it comes to communication and relationships and when things are, may not be going the way you want it to or, or you may not be in the best space in whatever relationship, an intimate relationship romantically or w- just with a friend or family member. And the consensus, it seems like, is that language that says, you know what you did, I ain't got to tell you and I'm going to cut you off type of thing Mm -hmm. where you cutting people off with no explanations. You are assuming that somebody know how you feel. You're quiet, but your actions is really loud. Mm, So you assuming that, you know, she should know or he should know what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling. I ain't got to tell you we grown that whole, what I believe to be that toxic energy Mm -hmm. is what does not speak to effective communication in my opinion. I think that that's very toxic. I think that cutting people off that you love or that you claim to love um, without no explanation, I think that's immature. I think it's, you know, I do think that it has levels to it where, you know, obviously if you're in an abusive relationship and, you know, verbally abusive, physically abusive, and you just got to get out, you know, those type of situations I believe are the exception, but to just not tell nobody how you're feeling and start acting funny or just never speak to them again or you're not reachable now or whatever, I think that that's toxic. And I think that that does not show that we're able to hold successful relationships. Okay. So that's the, that's the, that's a big piece right now, only because that's what I'm seeing on social media a lot. That's, that's the narrative. I think a lot of us are pushing and a lot of people, you know, they post something, repost something, it becomes bigger than what someone might have intended it to be. And now everybody, this is just the language. Like, you know, you know what you did. I cut people off without no explanation. It's, it's just right. toxic. Yeah. And and I agree 100% because essentially um, I'm new to most of the newer, pla- like not newer, but to the platforms like Facebook, social, um, and Instagram, things like that. Right. Um, you know, I use the... I hide within Twitter. Like, nobody finds me there. I'm cool there. Nobody cares about what I do. Right. And it's just, you know, I like what I like. But I usually, my most, um, the what, the reason why I use it the most is because I feel like news gets there fastest. Okay. Um, so that's why I've always liked it. I'm big on sports people. Um, y'all should know that if you listen to our Unprivileged Drinkers podcast. Big, big time Cowboys fan. has been there about five times to the stadium. I love, love, love my team. So, Anything that happens, I usually get my information from there. So that's why that form of communication works best for me because mm-hmm. I like to be 
like the first to find out something. I don't want to be last where somebody texts me, like, yo, you seen what happened with such such. So I'm that person. You know what I mean? I like to be in the know first. Um, I I just, that's just, like I said, that's my comfortable way of communication. But going back to what you were saying as far as how social media and the, and the toxicity that comes along with some of these posts or things that people share, or if you know two people aren't on the same page, you knew they were, but now they're not, and they're throwing like, indirect shots mm-hmm. it um i don't like seeing it you know what i mean yeah. because like especially when i know it's two people that really got real love for each other mm-hmm. um it kind of like makes me go like that. that's why i, I don't want to be on here because i have an image of what i th- what i imagine people being like and then when i see this is like oh yeah y'all just like this person you know just like that person and that's not to say that everybody's like that but i'm just saying like from a from a distance it just kind of like you bringing people, other people into a situation where is if you just sit down and talk to that person, mm-hmm. and if y'all don't agree, that's fine too. Like, you can agree to disagree. You can move on from that. It's right. not the end of the world. You know what I mean? It's just that time is fleeting. You can't, like, rewind that and be like, oh, damn, I would. Like, you know what I mean? You yeah. hear a lot of those, excuse me, a lot of those uh, things that um, people do where they regret not doing this or regret not doing it because time, like I said, it, it ain't slowing down for nobody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And We've all had to take a, a back seat to what COVID has done um, these last couple of years. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there was people really, like, not okay mm-hmm. with being in the house. You know what I mean? And and luckily for us, we didn't have that problem. You know what I mean? I heard a lot of people like, man, we ready to kill each other. And we literally have no. never had that problem. Like, and we've literally been stuck in the house together up until this point. You know Since what I mean? Then. Yeah, yeah. Like, really, like. You know what I mean? We haven't been back to work in the office like that on a consistent basis since then. So it's like, w- th- I think the biggest part of that is that level of communication. I think yeah. when you talk things out and you, you know, have an expectation of how you expect your partner to be, mm-hmm. it alleviates that anxiety. I think a lot of people realize it now that they have anxiety. They don't suffer from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they may have anxiety that causes them to feel a way and they react a, a certain way. So that's that goes into another part of communicating. I'm um, communicating because I noticed uh, your level ang- of anxiety a couple years ago, and I'm like, okay, there's a problem here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem here. Like, you keep doing certain things, like little twitches and stuff, and I'm like, all right, it makes sense because even when you like think about it, like when we used to, uh, you know, at the old house, we were sleeping, we'd be like, oh, I just had a dream somebody broke in. It's like, what the? What are you talking about? Like, yeah, well, when you dream, I know, it but feels it, it, real. but the, but that's not that's not the point that I'm making. It's not the fact that you dream. It's the way you wake up after the dream, where you really like, no, we seriously got to get out of here because uh, somebody's gonna break in the house. I know it's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's not. I mean, not that it can't, but I'm just and saying. not that it wouldn't have because it could have. It could have, but it didn't. That was during the time where people was like, it's like they had home invasions and stuff going on, right? So it was subconsciously. I already was anxious about it. So dreaming it and it feeling real and having a kid at that time, everything just was piling on me in those dreams. And I wasn't having it just like, you know, I have the dream and that's it. I wake up in a frenzy and it's over. No, I was having the dreams multiple times. But that's due to to your anxiety, though. It was driving me crazy. So it was like, we got to go. Yeah, yeah, it was due to your anxiety. But um, yet and still, um, I wanted to kind of like talk about how, you know, we both have like pretty big families. Um, Yeah. Like overall, I, my immediate family, as far as siblings, is a little larger than yours, but mm-hmm. still, we have a large family in total. Right. And I've been privy to your family's um, communication styles and habits. You've been privy to my uh, family's communication styles and habits. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? I'm gonna start with my family first. What is it that you think that my family could benefit from? In your communication styles, like in your family's communication style. Um, so all right. So, so when it comes to my family's communication style, what I will say is that even if, even if the words may not be loving in the moment, mm-hmm. what I will say is that a lot of us have a mentality of not brushing things away. So. We won't sit on something for a long time. It's not going to be something that's going on where we we don't all know what's going on. It might not be handled in the healthiest or the best way possible, Mm -hmm. but I do believe that, and this is just my immediate family we're we're speaking about, I believe that 
we have the ability to get it out. Like we can, we'll say it. I don't think that time goes on where it's like, oh, I didn't know that you felt like this or, you know, saying is not a problem or and if and it really is. You know what I'm right. saying? So I think that we are more vocal. Okay. At the forefront of things. Like I said, even if okay. it's not I, I received well or even if it's not, I think it's out in the open. It's out, no, right. Okay. I see what you're saying. I, I, I didn't so, follow what you were saying. Before, right. So benefiting from, you know, maybe looking at everything as an emergency type of thing where it's like, and it's not, everything is not an emergency, but for me, when it comes to my immediate family, my mom, my sisters, I feel as though when something ain't right, it's an emergency to me because I don't personally like to be in a position where me and my mom or me and one of my siblings aren't speaking. It don't feel right. Um, so when I'm in a seat where I'm involved in something with one of my family members, I overanalyze. I sit and I think for a long time and I try to figure out, you know, how can this be fixed? Like I'm a fixer at heart. I'm always looking for some type of solution. How can we make it better? Um, so I think that that part of communication is important to not sit on things and not let and, and let it fester yeah. to become bigger than what it already is. I think, yeah, and w I would say that that is something that we, and I'm speaking of my family, mm -hmm. we could um, do better at because I know that we will allow, and that's not just my generation, but I know older generations in my mm -hmm. family have allowed things to fester over years, decades, mm -hmm. and not speak behind it. You know what I mean? Like, um, like even my my, my dad and my uh, my uncle, after my grandma passed in 2009, they didn't speak again, um, from my understanding, until... My uncle passed with COVID, and that was like 2020. So you're talking about like maybe 10 years or so, 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that like you said, like getting that initial uh, feeling or, or whatever that emotion is out there first to people mm -hmm. or to that person that you may be having that disagreement or argument with, at least they know what you're thinking and or feeling. Whereas though, there's a lot of times where you like, we kind of leave it out there. Like, you know what's up. Mm -hmm. like, no, you don't. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going on. You ain't tell me. You ain't tell me. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like, you didn't tell me that. So how would I know that that's exactly how you're feeling? And it's like, it's that as, uh, that assumption of, you know, you know what I you know what I said. Mm -hmm. you, like, you know how I felt. Like, no, I don't. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. We're, we're not mind readers here. So we can't pretend as if, you know, that is just the norm. You know right. what I mean? Like, exactly. and, but we, we, but as a society, we are making that a thing. Like, mm -hmm. I said what I said, and it's like, huh? I, like, yeah. What did you actually say? Like, you know what I mean? Like, people, and I get it. Nonverbal communication is a thing. Yeah. Nobody's going to take that away from. Of you. course. Uh, but you know, you and you know, it it can even go back to like when people say, "I said what I said," or "You know how I feel." A lot of times, it's pride. Like, for example, pride. Exactly. You know, we all adult. We are. We all are juggling adult friendships and relationships. And if I ain't talk to my friend, somebody who I'm saying is my friend, mm -hmm. genuinely, if I ain't talk to you in two months, you know, some people, it'll start going through their minds. Like, I ain't talked to him or her in two months. They must not fuck with me like that. Right. And it's like, oh, well, I'm keep that same energy. Mm -hmm. Instead of minimizing your pride in a moment and saying, you know what? I miss my friend. Let me call. Let me text. Let me be the one to reach out. Instead, we got this idea that we want to, oh, you should reach out to, like, I don't know. For me, I don't calculate as much. So a lot of times I, I wouldn't always be able to tell you, like, last time we talked, I text you. Or last time we talked, yeah. I called you. If I miss you, if I want to talk to you, I'm going to talk to you. But there is a such thing as, and this is the flip side of that, it is a such thing as in your silence, your actions, your demeanor can be very loud to somebody, and it could come across as, you know, you acting funny or right. you not feeling me. And then that's where the confusion starts when it could just all be nipped in the bud with communication from the beginning. If you just tell somebody how you feel, because that's, that's another thing. A lot of times it'd be people don't like to feel vulnerable yeah. in a moment. So, and there he is. And there he goes. Messiah right. Eubanks. Yeah, so this is our our new child. He's uh he's just waking up. Um, we was trying to get this done before he he, he did that, um, but you know I'm gonna hold it um, while you you go ahead and do that. But um, 
I agree with um, pretty much everything that you're saying. It's just, I, like I said, I'm trying to think of ways that I know that we can have better communication with um, my family and my family dynamic and, and how I can extend that to other people that are out there that may be going through things. Like, I know in my family we have had um, and probably will in the future have family meetings where people have to come and talk and sit down and be vulnerable and spill out what may have made them feel away or what what was said on social media that they disagree with or what anything. It's just like it's all of these different things that kind of go into um it go into like just dysfunction. You know what I mean? Like and I we've all seen it, you know what I mean? And it's unfortunate because Somebody will say, well, I didn't know y'all was going to X, Y, and Z. And then it's like, oh, well, I put it on social media. Well, that wasn't for me. You know what I mean? You didn't right. tell me exactly. Um, so it's just like it's one of those things where I just want my family um, just to kind of like show a better, uh, just be better with communication. You know what I mean? Because we have so many tools at our dis- um, disposal. A lot of us are following each other on um, TikTok. I mean, that's, well, yeah, TikTok, you can say that, even though that's not really like, we don't communicate like that through there. It's more like entertainment. But right. like, you know, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, mm-hmm. you know, all of those different platforms that people have that aren't being utilized in the way that they should be and they could be, you know what right. I mean? Because it, it could be used for fun and entertainment and that's fine. But if you just don't want to talk to somebody or whatever the case is, but you still posting, like you're so happy and everything's good. And it's like, well, damn, I called you, you ain't respond. I think that, we need to take, uh, uh, you know, what I mean, take account for that because sometimes, like, people want to hear from you. Like, and yeah. it, it is a, it's unfortunate that a lot of people don't know how to say, like, "Yo, I missed you." You know what I mean? Right. Like, I really want your presence not being at this particular event or not showing up for this. It hurt me a little bit because, like, you bring this level of that to it or whatever the case right. may be. So, I feel like if 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 we can at least get to a point where we s- are saying mm-hmm. what it is we're feeling without holding on to it or talking to the other person. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? About somebody else's situation. And we've all done it. That's not, that's yeah. not, we're not going to try to make it seem like, you know, um, anybody's perfect. You get on the phone with somebody and they're like, yeah, because they said, I'm like, yeah, they do that to me too. And then before you know, you caught up in it and like, yeah, well, yeah I was talking to them. They said, I'm like, wait, but I was just, I was agreeing because she do it to me too or he do it to me too. But <laughs> that don't mean that I feel like you feel, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just think that, what you said, it could work for my family dynamic as well, where at least if you just get it out there mm-hmm. first, um, you know, it, it, it's at least it's out there. There's no guessing game. Like, I don't know why they're not talking to me. I don't know why they like, right. I, you know what I mean? Am I blocked? I don't see these stories no more. Like all yeah. of that shit that and, I hear about. And that's the piece I think for me, like I know, and I want to say that I don't, I'm not going to say we all, but you know, I, I know I've been in the past, um, guilty of that and not necessarily me saying like um I'm not going to communicate you know is a part of me that's a big is a big part of me that feels like you know if somebody got you know something a problem or an issue specifically towards me and they move funny and act funny towards me at that moment, I feel like it's not my responsibility to be the kid because I'm fine. So I'm communicating as normal. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I, I might text you. Or I'm being who I've always been. And when you start to move funny towards me or you make a choice that don't line up with the way our relationship has been, I get, or I've gotten, let's just say, I've gotten tired of being the one that I felt like I got to be the one that's mature for everybody. Now I got to address with your issue so now I got to ask you, what's your problem? Right. Because I already got to come. Yeah, I already got to come to you and say what my problem is, if any. Mm-hmm. But I don't have a problem. But I'm feeling like you had a problem. So now I got to come to you and make you be mature to say, what's your issue? Right. Oh, because I was feeling like X, Y, and Z. Well, why you ain't just tell me? Like, so for me, I know over the years with a lot of my relationships, I've gotten to that point of like, I'm not gonna keep pulling people's teeth. Mm-hmm. If you got a problem with me. Say it. If you don't, it must not have been that important. But if I notice you moving funny, I'm going to move out the way. Yeah. And that's just how that's going to be. But I do think, you know, certain things are, um, and with certain people, I will say that that's not a black and white statement for me. Like, I can't act as if I, I'm going to be like that with everybody. Like, you know, if my mom <laughs> start, you know, just, yeah. 
I know this hypothetical. I ain't probably gonna be like, oh, well, that's what it is. Like, I guess I'll never talk to my mom. Like, it ain't gonna be on the, nothing like that. But right. that's where you know the the com- communication. Like, it really can eliminate a lot of problems. Um, and the indirect communication too. Like, it's hurtful. Indirect communication and not saying like you know the social media things like that because that stuff I feel like. You bringing in the world, like, yeah. Everybody you follow into the business, right? Making them guess, like, ooh, who's she talking about? Which one? Like, right, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is when when it comes to your family, when it comes to people who you feel like this is my close friend, I feel like nothing should be off the table. Like, I feel like when you know it's easy to do that with people who you not really in close relationship with. It'd be like, oh, well, I guess we. Whatever, but when it comes to your family, your siblings, your parents, your um, your cousins, you know anybody who you feel like something happened to them today or tomorrow, you will be sick. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Like death is very real, and for me, I ask myself: if something was to happen to this person today or tomorrow, will I regret where we are today? Do I feel like I've done all I can do on my part mm. to save or to keep this relationship healthy? And if I can say yes then that's, you know, right. that's cool. But if I can say no, if I'm going to honestly say no, and I can self-reflect and say I could have done this better, then I feel like it's worth a chance for you to be a part of the healing process. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I started off by asking you, what did you think that would be um, like a good communication style or, or oh. form for my family? Mm-hmm. Um do you have an, a, a suggestion of what you think would be good for yours, or something that we do? I should say right. that could be good for yours. Like take the good, with the good from ours and apply it to yours. Um, so what I will say is that before I knew, like y'all was having family meetings and stuff like that, that wasn't something that we would do. Like we've mean? never really sat and said, you know, we're gonna have a family meeting. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, I know we just recently had one. Yeah. From my suggestion of being like, you know, let's all talk. From my suggestion. Our suggestion. <laughs> um, let's all talk or whatever. Right. But prior to when I knew that y'all were having family meetings, I, I admired that because I was like, you know what? That's, you know, everybody getting together. Um, somebody recognizing that something ain't right yeah. and being the person to say, you know what? Let's all get together. Let's all talk. Um, so I think the idea of a family meeting is excellent. It's amazing because you're giving everybody a platform. Right. Um, and opening I think the floor up for you opening the floor up and, you know, starting it out with prayer, making sure everybody understands that we're all here for a common goal. That's because we love each other. That's because we want to all fix whatever is going on between us as a family. I think that that's amazing. Um, I do believe that when you have family meetings in any family, there needs to be a willingness to be transparent, a willingness to be honest, a willingness to come and be present. You know what I mean? Yep. And be and participate. Yep. Because if you have an issue, mm-hmm. which I think at that point, once if we're having a family meeting, it's already been understood that there's somewhere a, yeah, there's a problem we somebody know that somebody that you right, got the issue you got the issue exactly we're not here just to be like oh well i'm good no we're here because we recognize that there's an issue mm-hmm. and we've sensed a little bit of a divide here or whatever or fall right. off in this and that way so um i do agree with you i think that would be i think that it is great for um anybody you know what i mean because like i said yes. once you recognize that there's a problem then you know you can address it the right way so, um, like I said, that that level of vulnerability, that level of transparency needs to be ever present during those meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I know that it takes a few people, a few minutes or so for people to kind of like get that level of comfortability. Uh, and there's our other son. There's Mason. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think that, you know, you know once you kind of get into that groove of, of discussing, I think that, you know, people need to be vulnerable. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because if you have an issue, that vulnerability, some people look at it like it's a weakness. But it really, I t- I've always said, not always, but I've more recently in the last however many years have been saying that the vulnerability can be a strength. You know what I mean? When you show that you show that this is something that, you know, this bothered me. You know what I mean? I hurt this. That, you know, those things matter. Absolutely. So, um, I just think that we need to, as a people and culturally, 
get to that place again where we can sit down and talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, she wants some orange juice, son. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but yeah, we um, we just have to get back to that, and I think that we've gotten our families at least have gotten to a place where we don't all agree on everything. We don't always um see eye to eye, but at the end of the day, there's a level of respect mm -hmm. at the very least that right. we, we we hoping for. You know what I mean? Like you don't come together and it's like. They want to fight or you know that yeah. kind of stuff. We don't want that mm -hmm. in no way, shape, or form because we all love each other. But yeah, and that's I think that's another thing that um, I can say we can take from mm -hmm. your family dynamic is that I, I believe that even when there are like you know if something is going on, um, everyone's kind of able to coexist and still enjoy themselves together um, in moments where it's not necessary to to bring that energy. Let's just right. say that. Like in times where we have to be around each other and the energy is not necessary, like it's not the time or the place type of thing, um, I think that everyone does good at, you know, respecting each other and mm -hmm. coexisting in a way where everybody still feels like family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, we don't know how much longer we're going to be able to do this because we got, you know, yeah, we, we got, got two kids. Babies. We got in 30 minutes. We actually wanted to get in 30 minutes. That's the funny part. We, we, we just reached 30 minutes in doing this. But, um, you know, maybe we'll have a part two and where we can kind of get back into this a little bit. He's right. drinking out of the container. He wants to be breastfed. <laughs> it's, just, it's a mess over here. But we appreciate your time. You know what I mean? We, we won't continue this conversation. Um, a little bit later, um, it's Unprivileged Drinkers. Recent Neek is an Unprivileged Conversation about communication. Um, it's a hot topic right now, and I think yeah, that we need to... For I'm, sure. I'm happy to bring this to a forefront, and hopefully people will respond to this comment and, and let us know what they're thinking. Right. Um, but yeah, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Unprivileged Drinkers. We out of here. Static. up with a couple exes just to make sure I'm protected cause losing me is like wearing heavy chains as your necklace and I'm infinitely better it's hard for them to accept it than any nigga they had or any nigga that's next and come on they fuck around and do some crazy shit like trying to lock me down forever on some baby shit so I just tell them I'll be back on some lazy shit they start asking questions juking on some shady shit come on this the problem with being the same trying to settle down early won't have me in no chain Sitting court side, but I'm trying to be in the game There's something deep inside of me that's just not easily tamed Come on, and I be trying to calm it down But something by my spirit is attracted to the crown Don't want no wedding ring, so I be dumbfound To CC every girl that I'd CC round town But if I did, I'd tell them that I love them Don't want no situation, I just really want to fuck them And after I come through, I hit it crazy, then I tuck them I just might leave a hoodie or a shirt, cause that's my custom I'm telling you Pro at this shit. My stroke back and forth like we be rowing this shit. I fill her head with lies, but she be knowing this shit. So when it's time for our goodbyes, she start hoeing this shit. Come on. I'm all glowing this shit. Dice in my hand now, so I be rolling this shit. And my bars like a river, they be flowing this shit. And her ass real fast, so I be holding her shit. Come on.